Hello everyone, this is Shaurav here, the Modern Cubist. Hope you guys are all doing well. And uh, the holidays are fast approaching, so I'm sure many of you are planning out vacations or things with your loved ones. Uh, we certainly are looking forward to a visit to New York City to catch the Christmas uh, tree with the lights, as well as seeing a uh, uh, a nice ballet performance uh, at the Lincoln Center. So yeah, really looking forward to it. Uh, today's video is about uh, yet another painting. Uh, it's called The Divine Self. Before we dive into the painting, I wanted to give a little bit of a background as to what uh, the theme is about. And uh, I'm going to share something very important with you all. This is based on my uh, life experience and whatever I have been able to decipher some of it learned uh, as well as influenced by some of the very good teachers uh, also in the contemporary world. Um, you know we all go through life and uh, as a sequence of various events. Some uh, bring us joy, some bring us suffering and pain, um, some we remember for a very long time and some things we don't uh, but you know what if you really look at it uh, and this is going back to the teachings of buddha that i learned uh, during my course on buddhism at princeton university after years of meditation and years of sadhana or going through the deepest wisdoms buddha discovered this uh, he said that you are not your mind, you are not your thoughts, you are not your emotions, you are not your body, and you are actually not even your awareness. So what does that mean? To many of us, including me, this sounded way too bizarre. It's like, okay, I am me, you know, I have a name, I, I have a body, I have this and I have that. So let me put it in a very funny way. If you take a board, right, and describe yourself with, let's say, hashtags. So hashtag name, hashtag height, hashtag nationality, hashtag race, hashtag, you know, weight, hashtag likes, dislikes, uh, hashtag date of birth, you know. In the physical world, we always identify somebody with their name, date of birth, and place of birth. So put all of that on the board, right? Put as many things that you can list on one side of the board. You can then draw a line over here. And then one by one, you start asking the question, is this something that is man-made? that has been either named or tagged by your parents or society. If it is, then that is not real. That is just some, some name. If my name is A, it could have been B also. So it's not real. It's just made up. Then you start wiping away those identities. Right? Then you'll say, okay, place of birth. My place of birth is such and such country. But the name of the country is man-made. Erase it off. Then date of birth. Somebody just cooked up time. There is no time. You have a clock. That's why you have a time. Remove that date of birth. So you don't have a name. You don't have a place of birth. You don't have a date of birth. Likes, dislikes, everything is all tags. You will eventually see that there is nothing left on that board. It's absolutely nothing. Clean slate. And that, my friends, is what you are. What you are is nothingness. And everything that you perceive with your senses, so-called learned in the books of theory, senses, these are all man-made constructs. These are all illusions. In the words of the great sages, they have always unanimously said, everything is a maya, everything is illusion. What you truly are is nothingness. So, now, 
if you think that all of this sounds very bizarre, very esoteric, very woo-woo, okay, let's take science. If you are a student of science, then let's talk about quantum physics. You take any kind of matter, okay, uh, let's take this hand, okay. My hand is made out of cells. If you start going within that, you will see there is carbon because as we have all learned, there is carbon uh, as the base um, material for everything. Within a carbon, there are atoms. Within that, there are electrons, protons. Within that, there are subatomic particles. You keep going further down, right? Within subatomic particles, you have bosons and, uh, you know, uh, mesons, neutrinos, and you keep going further, further, further into the smallest possible. The smallest possible could be a wave, right? Which is, which is where the wave theory starts, right? Now, what generates the wave? There is something that is generating the wave. The quantum physicists have figured out that there is a nothingness that is generating this wave. That nothingness is what we just talked five minutes back. The whole universe that we perceive, that we think there is, exists because of a nothingness. Now, that is science. I'll give you another science theory of the uh, wavelength experiment, the double slit experiment. If you have heard about the double slit experiment and make it simple, what they did is they passed a light through two slits, right? Two vertical slits. The light basically dispersed into wavelengths, right? Into waves. Those waves, they found that there is a certain uniformity in those waves. But moment you look at the wave, you are creating a distortion in the wave. And that wave's distortion is creating a particle, is creating a manifestation. In very simple terms, moment you perceive something, the instant you perceive something, that nothingness is, is manifesting itself into a form. Okay? Everything that you perceive, moment you perceive it, the moment you perceive it, it comes into a reality, into something that is there that you understand because you have been given some context or I can call it some brainwash from the time you were born to kind of interpret what that is. If you didn't have an interpretation, you would be absolutely dazed and confused what the hell is going on. So anyways, it is a very impossible science as well as metaphysics to kind of translate this whole reality. But now I'm coming to something which is more profound, which is something more practical. The question that I'm trying to interpret is, if we are nothingness and everything that we see around in front of us, a manifestation, how is it coming about and how do we change it, right? So let's say a student, which was me included, when I was in college, uh, you know, I studied electronics and that was not a subject of my liking. So I did miserable in it, right? Uh, and I didn't want that to happen. I didn't want that to manifest because I wanted to get out of it, right? But it kept on going and dragging, right? Similarly, when if you in career, sometimes, you know, you don't like a particular work atmosphere or you don't like your boss, but that person keeps showing up in your life. Or you leave that job and you get into another which is equally crazy, right? Same thing happens with relationships. You get into a relationship, good or bad, you leave it, go to another one, you find that it's equally bad, right? Why is that happening, right? So today I'm going to talk about three steps very quickly and then we're going to jump into the painting. Three steps, how you are going to change your reality. The first step is, if you really see, the, if you whatever you perceive, right, somebody is perceiving it for you. There is 
something behind the curtain who is seeing everything or perceiving everything on your behalf it's like if you have seen that movie matrix where keanu reeves is plugged down hooked down to the machine and he goes into a virtual reality everything that is happening in the virtual reality is what keanu reeves is perceiving right same way everything around us is a virtual reality that means that cannot be real somebody who is watching it is you can call him or her god or whatever you want to call or a projector that projection one who is watching through you right through through the lens of perception is is the person who's creating it right actually there is one more step even the person who is watching has an awareness so that which is watching the watcher is a nothingness going very deep and i'm sure it's going to confuse the hell out of everybody but let's go back to our topic whatever is happening in your life today number one step is acceptance right accept it fully accept it fully right so let's say you are in a job and you don't like the way things are moving you don't like your team you don't like your work or whatever it is accept it don't fight it don't resist it moment you resist it it is going to persist in you so acceptance is the key you have to accept it the reason we resist is because of our ego we resist things because we are blocking it more you block it more it is going to fight against you so it's just like martial arts aikido or jiu jitsu or karate right moment the opponent is trying to hit you you move away and let that energy pass through you that is what acceptance does so the number one thing that you got to do is acceptance accept it as is bad grades fine accept it as is don't fight it bad boss accept it as is don't fight it money issues struggle accept it as is accept it as is 100% okay that's the first step second step is what i call as a gratitude now many people in the modern pop culture say thank you god for doing this no 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 then you're just telling a lie you don't have to thank anything for that right if i have a bad boss first thing i accepted it second i don't say thank you god for giving me a bad boss because then i'm lying to myself the second step should be you got to say maybe this is a blessing in disguise now what has happened is you have taken that to the higher authority maybe this is a blessing in disguise maybe this is a blessing in disguise and you leave it at that okay so we talked about two steps first is full acceptance of as is number two is maybe this is a blessing in disguise okay the third step is how you want to redirect this situation so so i'm going to talk about redirection redirection of the situation means like now that you have accepted it and said maybe this is a blessing in disguise now what is it you want what is it you want is what you can go back to that projector to that nothingness maybe you close your eyes and you see the whole world in front of you being played on that projector and you go one step back to the one who's watching and on from that standpoint you visualize what is it you want that is called redirection so i'll give you an example let's say you're getting bullied in school right and this is for our young viewers first step you accept it the way it is you accept it the way it is you don't have to jump in joy or feel sad just accept neutral accept it the way it is number 2 you you say maybe this is a blessing in disguise maybe this is a blessing in disguise third thing is you sit in a silence in a closed corner somewhere right just close your eyes and see the whole 
world in front of you right happening with your eyes closed because you can see everything with your eyes closed one that we understand in biology that eyes are there to see is nonsense you can see with your eyes closed because the projector is inside not outside of you so now you visualize with your eyes closed what you want to happen so let's say you visualize that you are going to school and all everybody around you comes and hugs you and says good things about you becomes your friend want to play with you and everything is happy and joyful and you are being praised right that is what you want to visualize keep on repeating this in your mind once you start repeating this what will happen is the whole movie will start changing the script you change the script of the movie and the outside whatever you are going to see the outside projection what is happening on the, on the screen which is your 3d reality or your virtual reality is going to start shifting because i told you the double slit experiment everything is nothingness but moment you put your attention to what you want that reality starts happening that is the double slit experiment in quantum physics you create your reality through your observation and you influence that nothingness okay if you have understood this concept that's great if you don't let me know i'll explain it to you one to one so now you're intentionally changing a reality by visualizing what is it you want do it every day you will start seeing your reality will shift so i hope this was useful with that said let me switch on to the painting there is a painting called the divine self and this is a acrylic painting on canvas it's very simple as you see here is the hand which is basically praying and saying maybe this is a blessing in disguise and here is the that that is behind the screen creating the reality for you right so remember the steps that i told you number 1 acceptance accept it so so this person is hands joined accept it whatever has happened or what is happening okay acceptance number 2 maybe this is a blessing in disguise maybe this is a blessing in disguise number 3 redirecting through visualization and through your imagination now this person is changing the reality to what he or she wants to see wants the person who is watching to create that movie okay so this is a beautiful painting it is uh, the way it is composed is this this section is kept unpainted because nothingness has no paint on it so you are nothingness and the person watching is also a nothingness and this is the reality which is your 3d world this is the virtual reality the maya that is going on if you like this painting then let me know and i would be glad to to talk to you more about it with that said thank you everyone and my website again is www. the modern cubist gallery.com take care bye